Are you ready to rock out with Teaser Talk? A podcast full of music, fashion, humor, and randomness. Here are your hosts, Donna and Holly. Happy Teaser Talk Tuesday. Donna and Holly here with another kick-ass podcast episode. So today, we are going to be talking about groupies. And not the kind of groupies that you are probably thinking of. That's right. Today we are going to be talking about serial killer groupies. And boy, do they have a club of their own, man. So it's funny. It's like I didn't even know that this was a real thing. I stumbled upon it on Snapchat uh, on the stories on the ID channel. And if you are not following them on Snapchat, you are missing out. So... What was interesting is because these women are stalking these murderers, killers, and whatever else you want to call them. Um, So we've compiled a list of the ones that we found interesting. Right. And first up, speaking of interesting, this is a lady who stalked a stalker. First up. So... First, we'll talk about the man behind the crimes. This was Richard Ramirez, and he was known as the Night Stalker. Um, Between the years of 1984 and 1985, so just one year, this man killed 13 people. He was dubbed the Night Stalker because he actually killed all of his victims in their bed. So his groupie's name was Doreen Leoy. And it was it was rumored that this Satanist received bags of mail each year, mostly from women. Um, multiple women started showing up in black. They called them the women in black um, to worship Ramirez. Bizarrely, one of his jurors, Cindy Hayden, claimed to have fallen for Ramirez during the trial. And on Valentine's Day, she even sent him a cupcake with the message, I love you. So Ramirez and many others might have thought that her love was enough to earn him an innocent vote, but not so much. Hayden actually found Ramirez guilty, reluctantly, but then later showed up to visit him in jail with her parents. Meeting the parents must not have gone so well because this is when Ramirez ended up with Doreen Leoy, one of his most notorious fangirls, and they were married in 1996. His lady love was a freelance teen magazine editor and self-described Catholic virgin from San Rafael. How romantic or not. <laughs> so we wanted, to sh- we wanted to share with you an audio clip from a news interview in 1990 with one of the ladies. They are the women in black, admirers of Richard Ramirez. Why were you in the courtroom today? I just wanted to see what he looked like. I think he's cute. This woman, who gave her name only as Paige, calls herself a Satanist. She says Ramirez has written letters to her and that she's talked with him in jail. Everyone makes him look so bad, you know, but I know that he's he's a nice person because I've met him and I know. He's convicted of 13 murders. I know. (laughs) But he's he's really a nice guy. It's very out of the usual. It's very out of the norm to be able to do that for a certain amount of time and length of period of time and get away with it, especially the outrageousness of it, the kind of murders that he did. When I went to go visit him, I asked him, you know, I said, how many other girls visit you? I want to know. And he kind of laughed and said, there's two, but I already know them, and I've known them for a while, and they're just like acquaintances and, you know, kind of, you know, made me uh, think that and believe like I was like the only one that he liked that was visiting him. Their attraction may be difficult to explain, but from Los Angeles to San Francisco, they stalk Ramirez whenever he appears in a courtroom. How do you respond to people who are going to think you're, you're crazy for this? I'll just say that they just don't understand. <laughs> in San Francisco, Chuck Coppola. So that was pretty creepy. Um, it's interesting to see how people are like, yeah, he's a great guy. He's a nice guy, but he also murdered people. But whatever, I guess to each their own. So, you know, I guess murderers need love too, right? Absolutely. 
Okay, up next on the list is the infamous Charles Manson. And let's talk about his groupies. Who, you know, Charles actually just passed away last month on the 19th. And a little side note there for um, our Rob Zombie fans. He did a voiceover on Manson's documentary titled Charles Manson, The Final Words, narrated by Rob Zombie. I'm going to have to watch that. I you know. I had it. It's, it's scheduled to come on. To, um, it, it was released, I believe, yesterday, but I missed it. So I have it recorded. Uh, it's supposed to be coming on tomorrow or something like that. So you better DVR that shit. Absolutely. Okay. Now back to where we were, we just left off at. So his crimes. Obviously, Manson was best known for being the leader of the 60s cult, the Manson family. Manson was guilty of conspiracy to commit to the murders of seven people, people, including actress Sharon Tate and four other people living in Tate's home. And a married couple, Lino and Rosemary LaBianca, so sorry if I butchered your last name, but anyway. La Bianca. I only know yeah. that because I watched a documentary about Charles Manson last night. Oh, look at you brushing up on your murderers for this episode. Oh, yes. <laughs> so even though the murders were committed by the members of the Manson family, obviously Manson himself influenced them to do the, to do the crimes. Thus, he was being guilty of joint responsibility. So let's talk about his sweethearts. Obviously, it's no longer the 60s, but the Manson family is still alive and well. And being looked at after Afton Elaine Burton, which goes, who goes by the name of Star. So she was the 26-year-old who started writing Manson when she was 19. And in 2007, she moved to California to be closer to him, spending up to five hours at a time every Saturday and Sunday at the state prison. So maybe it was love, insanity, I'm not sure what, but to show her display, or I'm sorry, to display her love for him, she carved an X in her forehead to match Man- Manson's infamous swastika. 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 Um, in, <laughs> in addition to <laughs> the body mod, Star spent the last nine years trying to help Manson get out and was blogging about his innocence. What was also interesting is Star had announced the couple's intention to get married in an interview with Rolling Stone that she had done saying, I'll tell you straight up, Charlie and I are going to get married. When that will be, we don't know. But I take it very seriously. Charlie is my husband and Charlie told told me to tell you this. We haven't told anybody about that. She sounds crazy. She's a little crazy. So, of course, you know, oh boy, Charles Manson replied, That's a bunch of garbage. You know that, man. That's trash. We're just playing that for public consumption. So, obviously, they never tied the knot. And the kind of the weird twist to this was that it was a rumor that surfaced saying that Starr only wanted to marry Manson for his corpse. So that after he died, she was going to have him, like, mummified and displayed. And I think she was going to sell his body, which is freaking weird. That's insane. Yeah. She was going to pimp out she was going to pimp out Manson's dead body. <laughs> so I'm I'm just going to say before we go to this next one, like Manson is one guy that like I can't say I admire him, but I'm very intrigued by him. So he's like the one person on this list who I can kind of understand where some little bit of infatuation with these murderers come from because he's just a very intriguing guy. You know, and I think the most intriguing is, like, he didn't even do it. So it's, like, he was such a manipulator and, like, had people so brainwashed with him that, I mean, hell, he convinced them to murder a pregnant woman and a bunch of people. It's just crazy. Yeah. Mind control. All right. So up next is the Hillside Strangler, Kenneth Bianchi. So his crimes... um, he was actually part of the duo known as the Hillside Stranglers, and Bianchi took the life of 12 women. He uh, had multiple groupies, but you know, having fans is one thing, and having them kill on your behalf is another, and that's exactly what Bianchi had going for him with his groupies. 
So one case with uh, Hillside Strangler Superfan is Veronica Compton. She was an actress and a writer, and she had what you could call a slight serial killer obsession which led her to write a screenplay about a female serial killer. Allegedly, that's how she met Kenneth Bianchi. She asked him to read her script and give her feedback, and the rest, as they say, is history. For these two, their love was very non-traditional and consisted of them sharing murderous fantasies, including coming up with a plot to make authorities think that the real Hillside Strangler was still at large. Compton went so far as to smuggle Bianchi semen out of the jail in a plastic glove and commit a copycat murder and plant the semen inside the victim. Long story short, she went to jail for the man she loved, then promptly ditched him for another serial killer, Douglas Daniel Clark. Ain't love a bitch. No words on who Compton's been shacking up with since she was released from prison in 2003, but I'm going to assume he is probably creepy because that's obviously what she goes for. You know, like, people have types. Like, you know, oh, I like, you know, whatever, tall, dark, and handsome. Or, oh, I like this. She's just straight up solving murderers. That's crazy. Yeah. You know, I remember hearing about her, and what she had done is she had, like, lured a female um, to her hotel room, and I can't remember how, maybe to have drinks or whatever, but she tried to kill her and strangle her. Well, the lady overpowered her and, of course, you know, escaped. And I'm like, come on, lady. Like, really? You really <laughs> thought that that was going to work? I'm an idiot. Well, what else? Okay. So, in the famous words of Jay-Z, on to the next one. Ooh, 99 <laughs> problems, but a murderous bitch ain't one. <laughs> so this one's interesting. Ford Wade and his groupie get a B-plus for very, very bizarre. So Ford was a serial killer who picked up prostitutes and then killed and dismembered them. He had sent severed female breasts to police to try and, that were trying to catch him. Um, so Victoria Redstall was a busty British act actress and a spokes for, spokesman for a breast enhancement supplement. So obviously it sounds like a perfect match, right? Um, so during his trial, she managed to get introduced to Ford in prison. She visited him often, and they sang together and talked about their childhoods. At his trial, she took pictures of him, installing one as a screensaver on her cell phone. That's cute. <laughs> you remember doing that, like, taking pictures or, like, writing notes and, like, putting it as a screensaver? Yes. Yeah, well, I mean, this one was just... So cute. Oh, whatever. Aww. So she said that she would trust him with her life. Another piece of irony that can be added to the mix is in 2011, five years after meeting, after her meetings with Ford... She was in a movie called How to Pick Up Girls. Really? Must have worked for him. Wow. Hey, Holly. What? Did uh, you know that TB will kill you? Yeah, like tuberculosis? Um, no. Ted Bundy. <laughs> so, Ted Bundy. He was actually a very handsome, charming man who between 1974 and 1978 brutally killed some 30 women. He was a necrophile and a sexual attacker, and he is considered the most notorious serial killer ever. He also probably holds the record for the most groupies. So female groupies overran his trial. One of them, Carol Ann Boone, married him during the trial and later gave birth to his child. Thank you, conjugal visits, for passing that bloodline down. <laughs> so, in prison, Bundy received up to 200 letters a day from women who were completely obsessed with him. Many thought him innocent, while others really didn't care whether he was or not. Um, even years after his execution, he has a completely new generation of followers 
or groupies, we shall say, that are besoded with the Sorid Bundy legend. But you know what? I will say Ted Bundy was kind of cute. He was very cute. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't know if I would want to have his baby. But... Mm, I'd like to see his baby. I'm going to Google that. Okay, well, yeah, we need to figure out, like, if Ted Bundy's kid. Oh, I guess he had a daughter. Oh, well. well not, not interested. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, let's move on. So, you know, like, this next one's always intrigued me, um, I will say. So, up next is Jeffrey Dahmer. So, when Jeffrey Dahmer, known as the Milwaukee Cannibal, went to prison for sexual assault, murder, and dismemberment of 17 men and boys between 1978 and 1991, dedicated female fans wrote to him. Not only did they write, wrote to him, but they also sent him money, like a shit ton of money. In total, fans paid out some $12,000 to this murderer, which I'm sure probably bought some good stuff and... Um, what do they call it? That's like the little store. In um, common commissary, commissary. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. I just know that because orange is the new black. Ah. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure like he was like rolling it. He was player pimp in the prison. You kind of said that like I just want to make it clear that I know that from Orange is the New Black, not because I am a murderer groupie. There you go. Did I do a good way of covering it up? Yeah, it's a good cover up. I was nice. actually trying to do some research on how to become one myself, but, you know, what else? It's cool. So, disgusted prison officials called the woman sick, obviously. Dahmer was murdered by another um, inmate in 1994. I didn't know that. I didn't either. Wow, we're learning. Okay, so this is one that, like, I, I didn't expect to be on the list of uh, anyone <laughs> who'd have groupies. This kind of reminds me, we, we kind of talked about, like, Don Vito having groupies, and I was like, what? This is kind of on the same level. So, John Wayne Gacy, overweight, narcissistic, and whiny. John Wayne Gacy had an unusual experience with a male fan a group guy, we'll call him. <laughs> so Jason Moss, who's a college student pretending to work on an assignment, wrote to Gacy. He claimed to be a homosexual in order to attract the attention of the serial killer of some 33 men. A visit turned nasty when the convict Gacy got violent and threatened to sexually assault Moss. He survived, though, later producing a book about serial killers and then a movie. My question is, was it worth it? You almost got butt raped by John Wayne Gacy. I hope the commission from that book and movie were really worth that traumatic experience, Jason Moss. I just, yeah, that's just, yeah. Yeah, that's just all kinds of wrong all the way around with him. Just like, like you said, like, it's John Wayne Gacy, you guys. John Wayne Gacy, and I mean, as he's if no he... Ted, he's no Ted Bundy. No, he's no Ted Bundy. And, I mean, it's one thing to be unattractive. Like, yeah, you can't help... Okay. But this man, like, he dressed as a clown. Like, he was a, he was a clown. How creepy is that? He was a murderous clown. That's a big cup of nope. Yep. A huge cup of nope. Nope, nope, nope. So, speaking about all, like, these murderers and the serial killers, Donna, who is your favorite movie murderer? <gasps> Easy, Jason Voorhees. You would. I would. I love him. He's just so mysterious with that ski mask. There's, like, a, underneath that ski mask is a handsome guy just really wanting to get to know Oh, him. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he wanted. Oh my gosh, that's 
fun. What about you? Who's your favorite? You know what? Mine is going to have to be Hannibal Lecter. Like, ah. and I guess that goes back to my Jeffrey Dahmer. Like, I don't know why. That's just, just like, interesting. Like, how do you eat people? Like, bleh. That's gross. But those movies were pretty good. He puts the lotion on its skin. It's really creepy, Holly. It's creepy. It's super creepy. But I don't yeah. know. Like, it intrigues me. Like, why the, like, why would you even do that? You know? Like, that's, I have a problem, like, I have trouble eating, like, hamburger sometime. I can only imagine people. Like, you know what my real problem with that is? The whole lotion thing. I mean, have you ever put lotion on and then, like, tried to eat finger food, like chicken wings or something, and then you taste that lotion? That's my real problem with him. I mean, why would you lather your food up with lotion, man? <laughs> I mean, send no, him down it's some... nothing to do with the eating people. That's not no, the no. That, send him, send him down. Is. No, it should be, it puts the marinade on its skin. I mean, come on. You don't want to eat lotion? It's going to give you the shits. <laughs> Man. You're All right. So we went from uh, creepy murderers to a little weirdness, but that's how we roll. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and maybe learned some things about killers and their groupies first of all that it is a thing um secondly that it's totally weird it's as weird as you would expect it to be if there's anybody we missed that you'd like to mention please get a hold of us uh we are intrigued by this holly probably more than she'd like to admit um she's probably writing a letter to uh one of these guys who may or not be alive not charles manson he is deceased. R.I.P. R.I.P. Yeah, or if you're one of these ladies that have a relationship, I want to, I want to talk to you. Let's oh, see. hell yeah. <laughs> yes. It's an interesting aspect. I mean, and I'm going to be... Lifestyle. I'm going to be sure to uh, find some pictures of this killer love child and post them. I mean... It's not some handsome man like I wanted it to be, but I'm still really curious to see what serial killers genetically produce. That's awesome. All right, guys. So that's all for today. As I said, hope you enjoyed. Uh, get a hold of us. You can reach us on our neglected, not often used Twitter. <laughs> um at talk underscore to underscore teaser, as I said, neglected. Or you can check us out on Instagram, which is not neglected because we are cute and we know it, so we like to post pictures. What, what? So until next time, guys, keep rocking. Thank you for listening to Teaser Talk. For topic requests and to connect with the hosts, follow at talk underscore two underscore teaser on Twitter. Keep rocking.